Hi folks, it's Switchback. Traveling to the desert requires a different set of rules than you might obey when you're out in the woods and like a more wet environment. It's just completely different. A lot of the leave no trace principles remain the same and I have a whole video series about that. I'll link it right up here. But I'm gonna put this together with just some additions that are specific to the desert. Principle one is plan ahead and prepare. One of the things that you can do to reduce your impact is go with smaller groups rather than larger groups. More feet mean more impact, more people that need to go to the bathroom, more people that need water, more people that may not be as good about picking up their trash. Bring a stove to do your cooking. Do not count on having a fire because first of all, there's not a lot of wood in the desert and fires will also char rocks and that is permanent damage. Learn how to deal with the extreme heat and learn how to find water. Learn how flash floods tend to work. Here it comes! We got a big time flash flood here now. <laughs> if it is raining where you are, or if it's raining upstream, or it's about to do so, then you are gonna wanna stay clear of anywhere that is a potential flood bed, a wash, uh, a dry creek bed, any of those kinds of places. Now that said, if you know that there is no rain and it's going to be safe to be in a wash or a creek bed, that can actually be a good place to camp uh, to leave no trace because when a flash flood does happen, it will wash away your prints, any of that kind of stuff. Avoid leaving behind any litter, any tree damage or cactus damage, any new fire rings, human or pet waste, graffiti, or other signs of your visit. You want to keep things looking as natural as possible. Someone's dog poop bag. Yeah, all of like the hearts and Jesus. There's so much of it. Travel and camp on durable surfaces. Avoid breaking or stepping on the cryptobiotic crust and any desert pavement. Try to avoid off trail travel in these areas and if you absolutely must cross them use the same footprints that you already see acro going across and if you have a group have everyone follow the same footprints that first set is the one that does the most damage avoid widening trails so stay single file if you're in a group toward the middle of the trail even if it's rocky or it's wet vegetation can take years or even decades to recover from being stepped on and it's especially fragile out in the desert here so look for large expanses of rocks trails obviously dry creek beds gravel sand and established campsites avoid breaking tree branches using nails wire or otherwise damaging trees avoid using or creating social trails like those between campsites or even cutting switchbacks all of those create a lot of erosion and require very expensive repairs. Try to use an established campsite or look for a durable surface to set up your camp and your kitchen and so forth. If you're in what's known as a pristine area, which means an area with very little human impact, keep it to one night in one specific spot to reduce your impact in that area and then move on to the next site. If you're going back and forth between one space and another, such as between your campsite and your camp kitchen or a water source in your campsite, try to use a different route each time so that you're not creating trails. Use a large collapsible water container to reduce the number of trips you need to make to a water source. When you break camp, Put things back as you found them and use a dead branch to brush out any grasses that are matted down and any footsteps. Familiarize yourself with the laws and regulations for where you're going. For example, in most places you need to be at least 200 feet or 70 paces from a water source when you're setting up your camp or doing any washing, uh, making a cat hole, etc. In California deserts, you need to be at least 600 feet or 210 paces away 
and you need to reduce your time at any water source to under 30 minutes. Here in Arizona, for example, if there's only the one reasonable water source, then you have to be at least a quarter of a mile away. And all of these are to reduce the impact of animals and their access to that water. Avoid contaminating these water sources. And that's really easy to do, especially if you are hot. But if you have on insect repellent or sunscreen or anything like that, that can very easily contaminate a water source. You also really want to avoid getting into small streams, into potholes, and any other self-contained small pools of water. Some places even require that humans carry in all of their own water, especially during times of scarcity. So again, know what the rules are, where you're headed, and learn how to properly cache and create your route based on where you can cache your water. Keep any pets or livestock from defecating in or near a water source. Adjust your water consumption based on that water source. So for example, if you are at a pothole, there aren't a lot of sources, really try to keep it to a minimum, but you can be a little more liberal if say you're at a very heavily flowing stream or spring or anything like that. But with those, you have to look at how much water is really flowing. Number three, dispose of waste properly. As always, pack it in, pack it out. So here's a pack it in, pack it out about how it takes two years for an orange peel to degrade. And 10 feet away, we find an orange peel. Leftover food, food peels, bacon grease, your toilet paper, and any other trash that you create, you need to pack out with you. Ideally, you even pick some up while you're out on the way. Try to use a toilet anytime that one is available. And if there isn't one available, then you can check out this video that's all about pooping outside. And I do discuss the desert in that video. If you are creating a cat hole, then look for organic soil and something away from cryptobiotic crusts. Things take longer to break down out in the desert, so burying toilet paper really is not recommended. Burning your toilet paper can cause a wildfire, so really packing it out is the way to go. If you opt for natural toilet papers, then you need to bury that with your waste. Try to avoid urinating onto plants because animals have been known to destroy those plants trying to go for the salt in our urine. Go for gravel, rocks, bare surfaces instead. Even better if you can dilute it if you have the water to spare. And remember to keep all wastewater and cat holes at least 200 feet from any water source. And that includes a dry water source. And this being gold country, there's all kinds of this kind of stuff that you find at random. It falls under leave no trace of leave what you find and that includes artifacts. I'll leave that here for the next person to find. Number four, leave what you find, except for trash. However, if that trash is over 50 years old, then it's considered an archaeological relic. I can't remember the exact verbiage. I'll put it across here. But you're not allowed to take that out, actually. Now, if you see relics of the past, including petroglyphs, arrowheads, anything like that, you need to leave it there. Remnants of railroads being built, any kind of an old dwelling or a petroglyph, even rock piles. And stay on trails to avoid accidentally trampling any kind of buried uh, artifacts. Leave plants and animals alone, of course. Don't feed any animals. Don't take any wood that an animal might use for a shade or a shelter. Don't take antlers that an animal might be chewing on for the nutrients. Avoid spreading any kind of invasive species or diseases, and that includes keeping any animals that you have vaccinated. That includes cleaning your car tires and your own footwear. Even just brushing them off makes a big difference. Number five, minimize campfire impacts. Ultimately, if you don't need a fire, it's really not recommended to build one. If you do need to build one, keep it small. Use dead and downed wood, burn it completely, and douse it with water at the very end before you leave. Smoke out your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Really only 
only build a fire if there is plentiful wood available and try to spread out where you're gathering from. Make sure that there is minimal wind, that the fire risk is low and that regulations allow. Plan to use a stove to cook rather than planning on doing it over an open fire. Never snap branches off of trees, whether they're dead or alive. A lot of plants out in nature, especially in the desert, will appear to be dead even when they're not. Use wood pieces that are no larger in diameter than your wrist. And this also means that you don't have to carry the weight of a hatchet or an ax or a saw. You should be able to snap it using your foot, your hands, anything like that. You really should not need an ax especially if you're out backpacking. Never ever burn foil or plastic lined packaging or leftover food. These don't burn completely and they can attract animals. And of course there's simply leaving your trash there. Last night was sifting through some of the old ashes in the fire pit and there were three cans, a whole bunch of old nails and the lids for these and all that. Just a good reminder not to throw your trash into the fire. Anything with aluminum, anything with a foil lining or plastic in it, like a oatmeal wrapper, packets, things like that will not burn. Six, respect wildlife. Like anywhere, learn what the wildlife is where you're headed and what to do if you encounter it. Rattlesnakes are incredibly common in the Southwest, which is where I am right now and they don't want to bite you. They're not aggressive, so keep your ears open. And if you want to know what to do if you see a rattlesnake, click up here. Wildlife expects to see human beings when they're out on a road or a trail, and they're much more disturbed by it when they're in the backcountry and away from a trail. So keep yourself on trails wherever possible. Of course, never feed wildlife for multiple reasons. Quietly observe any animals that you see from a distance and avoid disturbing them. Even a small disturbance can change their behavior. It can deplete precious energy reserves and displace them from a natural water source or habitat. Secure all of your smellables and keep your rest stops and your campsite crumb clean. And that means not spilling any crumbs on the ground or leaving them on your table or on your gear because rodents will be attracted to that. And then things that eat rodents like rattlesnakes and larger predators will be then drawn into your site or that area where people like to frequent. Between trips, you might wanna wash your pack, your footwear, or anything else that might be getting sweaty and salty because animals are drawn to that. And we've all probably seen stories online of people who have had their gear destroyed by a rodent who went for the salt on the straps of their pack. Marmots are great for doing something like that. But out in the desert here, you'll see rodents do that a lot. Suspend your food a few feet up off of the ground if you don't have your vehicle right there and away from tree limbs to avoid scavengers. And the most common scavengers out in the desert are going to be skunks, ringtails, and rodents like mice. Now that said, mice can climb up and down that line. So you may even want a hard sided container like a bear canister. This is what I personally do, even if it's not required because it keeps out everything. Avoid visiting during times of high stress for the animals. So for example, mating and birthing seasons in the highest heat of the desert during droughts when water is really scarce and food sources are also very scarce. You may have heard of hantavirus and this is spread by mice. And usually it's when uh, the virus is aerosolized through from the mouse's urine or feces. And anytime that you're disturbing, let's say like an old shelter or any kind of a structure, abandoned building, etc., and you know, you move a board and it kind of kicks out all of that, that's a great way to get it. And if you happen to touch a surface that has it and then you put that to your mouth or your eyes, your eyes are actually the biggest way that things tend to get in, but you can get hantavirus any of those ways and it can be fatal. So definitely avoid sleeping in these kinds of places and drawing mice into your campsite. Keep good control of your pets. And that includes, even if they're on a leash, that's still disturbing to wildlife. The best thing to do is really to leave them at home. But I know as a dog person, 
that I love being able to bring my dog with me on some of my adventures. Now that said, keep your pets again under control and dispose of their waste the same way that you do your own. Seven, be considerate of other visitors. I have a whole video about trail etiquette right up here. If you encounter livestock or someone on a horse, yield to them and go to the downhill side. Speak quietly to the rider as they go by. If you're stopping for any reason, such as double checking directions or taking a call, because some people take them on the trail, or you're stopping to take a break and have a snack and whatnot, then get off of the trail and move to a durable surface. Most people prefer to hear natural sounds when they're out in nature. And so if you are enjoying your music, use headphones. Use headphones if you're doing anything else that's making an unnatural sound. Keep any cell phone use discreet. And also try to reduce the use of any kind of bright lights. If you are wearing a headlamp and you're coming into camp, keep it down. Really try to avoid shining it into other people's campsites. Okay, yeah, I think it's fair to say this is where they want you to camp.